Hey friends, welcome back to Solon Public Library's Digital Story Time. This week we're going to be talking and about and reading stories about wolves. But first, we need to start with our welcome song. So we're going to wiggle our fingers and shake our hands and rub them together really fast, really fast, really fast. And put them on our knees. All right. You can sing along if you remember the words. If you want to read a book, clap your hands. If you want to read a book, clap your hands. If you want to read a book, have a seat and take a look. If you want to read a book, clap your hands. All right, what do we do after we clap our hands? That's right, we stomp our feet. If you want to read a book, stomp your feet. If you want to read a book, stomp your feet. If you want to read a book, have a seat and take a look. If you want to read a book, stomp your feet. Okay, what comes after we stomp our feet? That's right, we're going to twirl around. If you want to read a book, twirl around. If you want to read a book, twirl around. If you want to read a book, have a seat and take a look. If you want to read a book, twirl around. Okay, for our last verse, we're going to be as quiet as we can. And we're going to whisper, hooray. If you want to read a book, whisper, hooray. If you want to read a book, whisper hooray, hooray. If you want to read a book, have a seat and take a look. If you want to read a book, whisper hooray, hooray. <laughs> Before we read our first book, we're going to sing our Once Upon a Time song. So get your storybooks ready. Here we go. Once upon a time so grand, we listened to stories from across the land of kings and queens and dragons too, folk tale heroes with oxen blue. Once upon a time so grand, we listened to stories from across the land. Yay! Our first book today is called Little Red Gliding Hood. Little Red Gliding Hood. Does that sound familiar? Does that sound a little bit like Little Red Riding Hood? Yeah, that's because it is. This is a retelling of Little Red Riding Hood where instead of walking through the forest to Grandma's house, she is skating through the forest to Grandma's house. So she is gliding on ice. This book is written by Tara Lazar with illustrations by Troy Cummings. And now remember, I said at the beginning that all of our stories today have wolves in them. So let's see how the wolf shows up in this story. It was winter, and the river winding through the enchanted forest was frozen solid. A girl raced down to the river's edge and laced up her skates. Have any of you been ice skating before? Yeah, there's a, that big indoor rink um, at the Coraville Mall where you can go ice skating all year round. There's places up in Cedar Rapids. When I was little, they used to uh, freeze water um, outside our elementary school. There was like a concrete pad that they would fill with water in the winter and freeze it. And so you could bring your ice skates to school and go ice skating at school. Uh, it was pretty fun, but the ice was kind of bumpy. <laughs> no Zambonis to smooth it out. <laughs> So a girl races down to the river's edge and laced up her skates. Then she swizzled and twizzled across the ice. She did fancy figure eights, lovely loops, and willowy waltz jumps. Her spins were superb. Everyone called her 
Can you guess? That's right. Little Red Gliding Hood. Now, Little Red skates were worn in and worn out. No longer Snow White and a little too tight. She frowned at the creases and crumples. Can you frown? Yeah. Soon, she wouldn't be able to use them to skate to Grandma's. She went there every Sunday. No more visits with Grandma? Little Red couldn't imagine. She swizzled down the river and saw a flurry of friends gathering beneath a banner. Oh, maybe there's an event that's happening. Look, the banner says, a pairs skating competition. The prize, brand new skates. Oh, and look, they're golden skates. Oh, those look like the best ice skates in the whole world, don't you think? Oh, slippery slush, I got to win, says Little Red Gliding Hood. But it's a pairs skating competition. A pair means two, like a pair of shoes or a pair of socks. So that means that she needs a partner, so there can be two of them. The dish danced with the spoon, and Hansel spun Gretel like sugar. Little Red had no one. She asked each of her friends. Little Boy Blue just shivered and quivered. And the seven dwarves were, too interest were more interested in passing a puck around. Look, they're playing hockey. Old MacDonald slipped and fell. E-I-E-I, -E -I, ouch, he says. Little Red shook her head. None of these partners would do. Maybe Grandma could help find a partner. Little Red whisked off to Grandma's cottage, skating swiftly to avoid the big bad wolf. Look, there he is poking out from the trees. Over the river and through the woods to Grandma's house I go sings Little Red Gliding Hood. Little Red arrived safely. Oh, slippery slush, she said to Grandma, slumping into a chair. I can't find a partner for the skating competition. How about the gingerbread man? He's very sweet, said Grandma. But he's much too fast. I can't catch him, said Little Red. I bet Baby Bear would be just right for you, said Grandma. But Goldilocks thought so first. I know who, said Grandma. The three little pigs just moved into the brick house next door. You should ask one of them. So, Little Red skated to the pig's door. Little pigs, little pigs, let me in. Someone tapped her on the shoulder. Excuse me, said the big bad wolf. I think that's my line. The big bad wolf, oh no. What's gonna happen? Eek, the wolf! Little Red sprinted away. Her worn in, worn out laces began to unravel. Hey, glide back here, yelled the wolf, giving chase. He swizzled and twizzled across the ice. Little Red pushed on faster, but her boots were lopsided and loose, oh no. Stop, yelled the wolf. He steered clear of fallen branches with fancy footwork and sly spins in pursuit of Little Red. Uh-oh, Little Red skate flew off. Oh, slippery slush, she says. Look, she skated off of a waterfall. Uh-oh. But the wolf jumped in front of Little Red and caught her. Little Red shivered with fear. Oh howled the wolf. You're wonderful. The wolf gently put Little Red down. What? You're a super skater, but I was trying to warn you. Your laces were are untied. Oh, Little Red couldn't believe it. This was the big bad wolf? Happens to me all the time, said the wolf. My skates are older than Rip Van Wrinkle. <laughs> Little Red stared at his worn-in, worn-out pair. And then she had a grand idea. What do you think her idea is? Let's see. She needs new skates. 
and the wolf needs new skates. And there are two of them. Hmm. The day of the competition, Little Red arrived early. She laced up her worn and worn out skates, hugged Grandma, and stepped onto the ice. The trumpets blared with a fanfare, boo, 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 announcing the official warm up. But as the competitors swirled and twirled, a dark figure came zooming toward them. A boy cried, Wolf! Do you think that scared everybody? I think so too. But Little Red Gliding Hood and the Big Bad Wolf swizzled and twizzled together across the ice. They did fancy figure eights, lovely loops, and willowy waltz jumps. Their spins were superb. No one could believe the Big Bad Wolf was actually good. That's a performance I'll remember happily ever after, cheered Grandma. The judges whispered. They nodded. They scrawled. So they're writing down the scores on their papers. And they raised a row of perfect tens. Ten is the highest that you can get. And every single judge gave them a ten, which means that they thought Little Red Gliding Hood and the Big Bad Wolf had the best performance. Little Red and the big, not so bad wolf were named the winners. Oh, look at those fancy skates that they got. Oh my, what big skates you have, said Little Red. The wolf flashed a toothy grin. All the better to glide with you, my dear. The end. Oh, what a happy ending to that story. They made a new friend and they each got brand new skates so that they can continue to skate around as much as they want. I like this version of Little Red Riding Hood. What did you think? Did you like it? Give it a thumbs up if you liked it or a thumbs down if you didn't like it. Yeah, I give it a thumbs up too. <laughs> I have a little game board here and we have Little Red Riding Hood and her grandmother's house through the woods right up here. And I need your help getting Little Red Riding Hood to her grandmother's house. So we have a little um, game piece. It's a little red button on a magnet. We're going to start right here at the start. And I also have a big foam die that has different numbers on it, like a one, or a four, or a six. And we are going to roll the die and then count the number of dots and move our button across the board to help get her to grandmother's house. So can you help me? Okay, great. Let's go. So our first number is, can we count those dots? One, two. Can you show me your twos? One, two. All right, we're going to move our piece. One, two. All right, here we go. Can you count the dots? We've got one, two, three, four, five. Can you show me your fives? One, two, three, four. Four, five. Good job. Now we're going to move our button. One, two, three, four, five. All right. Let's see what do we have next. Oh, there's this one. Can you count the dots? One, two, three, four. Can you show me your fours? One, two, three, four. Four. Good job. Let's move our button. One, two, three, four. Oh, we're almost there. We're halfway there. Okay, we're going to roll our die again. What do we got? Three. That's right. One, two, 
three, three dots. Can you show me your threes? One, two, three. Good job. We're going to move our button. One, two, three. Okay, we're getting close. Oh, let's see. What one did we roll this time? Can you count that dot? That's right. It's just one. Show me your ones. Good job. One. Okay, let's count how many we have left to visit Grandma. One, two, three, four, five. Five more. Let's see what we can do. Oh, we rolled this number. How many dots? One, two. That's right. Show me your twos. One, two. We'll move our button. One, two. Okay, how many spots do we have left? One, two, three. Can you show me your threes? One, two, three. Good job. Let's see. Let's cross our fingers really hard and really wish for a three. We'll even blow on the dice for luck. Let's see. Can we get a three? <gasps> Look at that. We got a three. One, two, three dots. Show me your threes. One, two, three. And we're going to move our button. One, two, three. Yay! We got to grandmother's house. Thanks for your help, friends. Awesome job counting. Remember how I said our stories today all have wolves in them? Well, I have a wolf picture right here that is all mixed up. Will you help me put this wolf back together so we can read our next story? Awesome, thank you. Okay, so we have some different parts of our wolf. We have some feet that are right here. Can you show me where your feet are? Yep, maybe tap them around, good job. Let's see, we also have a front paw right here. That's like his hand. Can you show me your hands? Excellent. We have two ears right here. Can you show me your ears? Yes. And we have his tongue. Can you show me your tongues? Mm. <laughs> Excellent. So let's see. Let's start with our wolf's feet. So we're going to put those right here. That's a good starting spot for our wolf. Now let's see. What puzzle piece do you think comes next? Do you think... His face goes next? Does that work? <laughs> no, that's silly. Do you think that his ears come next? Does that work? <laughs> no, that's silly. Let's see. Do you think that maybe his back and his tummy come next? Does that look like that fits? Yeah, good job. Can you show me your tummies? Excellent. Okay, so let's see what connects after we've got his bottom feet. And then let's see, what do you think comes next? Do you think his tongue comes now? <laughs> no, that's silly. He looks kind of like a hedgehog, doesn't he? No, nope, so that's not next. Let's see, do his ears come next? Mm, not quite. Let's see, does his hand or his other arm come next? I think that looks good. Good job. High fives. Okay, so now what comes next on our wolf? Does his tongue come <laughs> next? No, that looks silly, doesn't it? Let's see. Do his ears and his eye come next? Yeah, I think that that works. Can you show me your eyes? Can you blink them? Excellent. Can you show me your ears, your good listening ears? Yes, good job. All right, we have one piece left. Can you tell what it is? That's right. It's our tongue piece, our mouth piece. Let's see. Does that fit right there? 
<laughs> yeah, it does. Let's see. Can you show me your tongues like the wolf tongue, wolf's tongue? Mm. Can you show me your sharp teeth just like the wolf's sharp teeth? <sighs> Excellent. Okay, are you ready for our last story time that also has a wolf in it? Yeah? Okay, let's go. Our last story time book today is called The Three Little Pigs. Hey, they were in our last story too, weren't they? This book is written and illustrated by Emily Bolum. And this picture of the wolf is taken right from this book. So you're going to recognize this wolf when we get there. Here we go. Once upon a time, there were three little pigs. One, two, three. They lived with their mother in a small, cozy house. One day, Mother Pig said to them, You three are almost grown up. It is time for you to go and find out about the world and build homes of your own. So the three little pigs packed their bags and said goodbye to their mother and set off to explore the world. They hadn't gone far when they met a man who was carrying a bundle of straw. Please, said the first little pig, may I have some of that straw? I would like to use it to build a house of my own. Of course, said the man, and he gave the first little pig a small bundle of straw. It would be nice if it was that easy to get things that you needed, isn't it? Just ask. <laughs> the first little pig took the straw and began to build himself a house. His brother and sister went on their way. After a while, they saw a man who was carrying a large bundle of sticks on his back. Hmm, sticks. Excuse me, said the second little pig. Could I use some of those sticks to build myself a house? Certainly, said the man, and he gave the second little pig a pile of sticks. The second little pig took the sticks and he went to work building himself a house. His sister said goodbye and continued on her journey. She walked and walked until she saw a man with a big pile of bricks. They look like just the thing for building a house, she thought. And she asked the man if he could spare a few. Yes, of course, replied the man. And he gave the third little pig some of his bricks. Just about that time, the first little pig finished building his house of straw. That looks like a nice house. What a fine house, he thought, feeling very pleased with himself. Have you ever felt pleased with yourself after building something? Maybe it was a pillow fort or something with Legos or blocks or uh, twigs or rocks outside. Yeah, it feels nice to make something good, doesn't it? But just at that moment, who should come along but a big bad wolf. The first little pig ran into his house and shut the door. Little pig, called the wolf from outside. Little pig, let me come in. Oh, does that wolf picture look familiar? Yeah, that was our puzzle. Not by the hairs on my chinny chin chin, replied the first little pig. Then I'll huff and I'll puff and I'll blow your house down, cried the big bad wolf. So he did huff and puff and the house of straw was blown to pieces. Oh no. I'm going to eat you up, cried the wolf. But the first little pig ran away as fast as he could. He ran and ran until he reached his brother's house made of sticks. That's right. The two little pigs hurried inside and slammed the door. Do you think they're going to be safe inside the stick house? Soon, the big bad wolf reached the house of sticks. Little pig, he said, knocking on the door. Little pig, let me come in. 
Not by the hairs on my chinny chin chin, replied the second pig. Then I'll huff and I'll puff and I'll blow your house down, cried the big bad wolf. And do you think that's what he did? It was. He huffed and he puffed and the house of sticks was blown to pieces. I'm going to eat you both for dinner, cried the big bad wolf. But the little pigs were too fast for him. They ran and ran until they reached their sister's house made of bricks. That's right. Then all three little pigs dashed inside and closed the door. Now, the big bad wolf was feeling very hungry. He ran up to the house of bricks and cried, Little pig, little pig, let me come in. Not by the hairs on my chinny chin chin, replied the third little pig. So what did the big bad wolf say? That's right, should we say it together? Then I'll huff and I'll puff and I'll blow your house down. So do you think that's what he did? The big bad wolf huffed and puffed. Then he puffed and huffed. But nothing happened. He took a great big breath and tried again. But no matter how hard he blew, the house of bricks did not fall down. Still, the big bad wolf did not give up. Quickly, he clambered onto the roof of the house of bricks and began to climb down the chimney. Oh no! But just at that moment, the three little pigs took the lid off their dinner. So when the big bad wolf reached the bottom of the chimney, he landed in a pot of soup and burned his bottom. <gasps> that would hurt if you fell into a pot of boiling soup. Ouch! As quick as a flash, the big bad wolf jumped out of the pot and he ran away as fast as he could. The big bad wolf never came back again, and the three little pigs lived happily ever after in their sturdy little house made of bricks. That's right. The end. Oh, and look, they're all snuggled up in bed all together. That's lovely. The end. Thanks for listening to our stories this week about wolves, the wolves in Little Red Gliding Hood, and in the Three Little Pigs. But it is time for our goodbye song. Will you sing along with me? We read a book, and we played a game, and we sang a song to next time.